Oh, wait, that's a good take. It's our base bait, Crash Magic 2. Oh, my God, it's so cool. Oh, my God, look at that. Well, you know, it's just that, you know, the box art isn't... um, And, you know, the title's kind of clunky and... And and I just... we, You know, I... I'm I'm sorry, it's just that it's always uh it's always something. So I've been meaning to do uh off the cuff videos for a while now. I've got some other videos on the way, but it was important that I just uh let you know that I'm trying something new. So here's here's something that could uh blow up in my face. But that's okay, I'm I'm used to that. What the fuck does that mean, Will? Mm. Mario's back. That's uh that's pretty cool. I gotta say, I've got something of a complex relationship with Mario, and not just because he still has my keys. Nintendo set a precedent with this franchise on the GameCube that suggested that they could go all out and throw uh, some really weird and wonderful ideas out there to suggest new gameplay mechanics, and it, it wasn't all necessarily perfect, but it was really cool to see, and I always felt that Galaxy was uh, contextually a bit of a step back. Just kind of felt like a massive tech demo. A really good tech demo, uh, but nothing that's inspired the imagination in quite the same way. And you know, it's kind of telling. You can't really play a cart, uh, tennis, golf, fucking Aqualong Society Mario spin-off game without seeing a tribute to one of these stranger ideas. So I've been waiting for another curveball for quite some time now. Now we have a game that's just throwing everything against the wall and I kind of love that. Super Mario Odyssey, we're going down a Greek route. Uh, fuck dude, uh, is he gonna fall out a wooden horse? Is he gonna try and seduce a nubile young 12 year old boy? Is he gonna uh, fight suitors for his wife? Well, yes, that last one is happening. Uh, we see Suti for Booty Bowser here. Uh, all, all up in his posh togs to come and take on the Mario boy, and um, that's great. Bowser has his own entourage of wedding guests that are going to be the villains this time around. Just trying new things and, and giving us, uh, you know, something to, to play with that suggests new ideas for gameplay. So, so, so one of the things everybody was kind of weirded out about was the weird Sonic DX fucking city levels they were doing, and I actually think there's a method to their madness there. Yeah, it's really jarring. The idea that you have normal sized people, which implies that Mario is just some kind of, kind of creature, some sort of inhuman goblin. I I'm not really sure what they're going for there. But you know, while that one seems the most jarring and really stands out, none of the other levels actually share any stylization. I mean, obviously, yeah, you have different themed levels, but they don't share the same aesthetic and graphical qualities, even though they're more cartoony. And I have a feeling that that's going to play heavily into whatever gameplay mechanics they're working with here. I don't know, I just have that notion. I had no clue. We see Mario frown. We see Mario fight Scorpion Boy. I just, that's a centipede, but I mean, I'm just, I'm real happy to see that there are stakes in the Mario game again. I really adds to the experience, and I'm just getting a GameCube vibe from some of the Switch titles, even ARMS. Looks kinda neat, but obviously, uh, I wanna hold off until they actually announce more than just, you know, a couple of games. Cause I've been burnt before by Nintendo, uh, a couple times actually, and you know, it'd be nice to uh, really invest in that experience uh, with something a bit bigger. And then this happened. Oof. I also want to comment on ukulele. You know, one of the things uh, I've said before is that the biggest problem with Rare is that they're not really uh, innovating. But then, you know, the more I've seen ukul of ukulele and the more that's come out uh, in terms of what the actual context of that game is, uh, the more I've been really interested in it. I have a lot of problems with Banjo-Kazooie, probably worth another video. I have a lot of problems with how that game is put together, and I think a lot of platformers improved on it, but graphically, Rare are always ahead of the game. And one of the most tragic things about their time with the Xbox is that I actually believe it's when they produce some of their greatest titles. Viva Piñata, um, and Nuts and Bolts. Nuts and Bolts gets a lot of undue hate, and I understand because my boy Jontron waved his fist in the air, and he's a good boy, and he's right. I'm so funny! But, uh, that game, uh, visually, and in terms of what it was trying to do mechanically, is pretty astounding. It predicted a lot of stuff that's come out now that's gotten really popular. It just was in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong jacket on. Shouldn't have been wearing the banjo jacket. People were going to target that shit. But even then, they were making games that look better than some of the games coming out now. And a lot of it was down to stylization, something that the new Crash game should really adopt. But don't worry, we're getting to him. And, uh, you know, I think Ukulele um, just has a wonderful story idea. The idea that a corporation is taking over and stealing every original idea and, you know, these two platformer guys are here to take to win it back. Genius. Genius. Very simple, but very true. Ah, uh, it's great. I'm really excited for that. And that hopefully, now that they have a studio that's going to have a hopefully very successful game out, they will produce the kind of content that they were planning to and trying to produce uh, during their Xbox tenure. 
Um, so, you know, that would be cool. This is alright. Um, I'm pretty excited about uh, things happening in 2020. What year? 2017. Fuck. I live in a, in a, under a rock, you have to understand. The last case study that we will explore is the Crash Bandicoot, which is back! And you know Crash is my boy, Crash has been my boy for a long time. I have a lot of fun history with that guy. Um, we used to have picnics together on company hours. I've still got his wedding ring. What the fuck? Uh, I am very skeptical, as I always am, of uh, new the new Crash game. Especially the fact that it's still under Activision, especially the fact that it is not coming out under a label, you know, that's that's got the same amount of freedom as they probably might have under Sony. Maybe that's not true. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I would say that I'm okay with how the game is looking. I think there's some really genius touches they've added. I love the idea of time trials in the first two games. I love uh, the fact that the gameplay actually looks pretty one-to-one. -one. IGN were playing a version of the game on the show floor that uh, looked pretty decent. They were failing as much as I remember failing when I played the game. I mean, I know it's IGN, can't spell ignorant without... Hmm. But, um, honestly, I was- I was really impressed with how the actual speed of the game is looking, because that trailer made shit look limp. There is a temptation, when you make a HD re-release, to just add shit constantly on top of your models to make them look nice, but you just end up highlighting a lot of stuff that's really jarring and, and adds an almost uncanny effect. Like seeing every hair, and also just adding lots of frames to animation to make it look smoother. It doesn't equate to the kind of Looney Tunes snappy timing that you're going for. Uh, two very different things. Stylization, making it look kind of like the concept art, is what uh, Rare has done really well for a while now. And uh, Crash could really do with taking a leaf out of the book. For some reason, the silhouettes of the Komodo brothers are kind of broken now, like with the billowed out cheeks and the really scrawny neck. I, I know maybe it's just because I'm a real big nerd boy who, who who likes those characters, but yeah, not really sure how you could fuck that up. Because the drawing is very different and looks a lot better. And especially when Skylanders was supposedly going for a more Zimbalas inspired style. Uh, not sure who dropped the ball there. Uh, Tropy looks like he wants to fuck a bus. Brio, mm, he drank a lot of piss. It's weird, it, it, it's weird, but I'm sure the gameplay will be fine. It's probably worth mentioning that uh, it's great they're sticking to the script, because Ratchet didn't, and that was like a fucking fever dream. Uh, it, it made me feel like I was playing like a half-remembered version of a game that I liked once upon a time. It's weird. Don't do that to me again. I'll, I'll find you. I love that Maurice LaMarche, because of a contract loophole, is playing Brio. Trust me, there's no other reason that that would be happening, because he was in Mind Over Mutant, and it's complicated. Yes. And it's nice that, as a result of stuff like that and Lex Lang being here, there will be the DNA of games that have come after the Naughty Dog series. That's great! I'm, I'm real happy about that. Um, it means that it won't just be a complete rehash of the first three games, but you know, I can always just go play the first three games if that turns out to be the case. Don't think we didn't notice them sneaking in that female empowerment. Bam! She knocks out a nerd. Uh, I'm sure that has no negative repercussions whatsoever, but honestly, I'm real stoked at the fact that they're just adding little details like that. It all works. It's all fine. Um, and maybe, maybe, uh, they're doing a good enough job that the Crash series will come back. And, you know, what I'm really hoping is that either Vicarious Visions, if they're continuing with it, will up their artistic game and know to do that. Or it will go into the hands of another company who will do an even better job. Who knows? I think what's really interesting about the three of these is that we're watching... Uh, three different levels of design competency manifest in the gaming industry. I really want C-list companies like Vicarious Visions to pay attention, and I'm hoping that Mario is proving that we can play with style to introduce new ideas that engage us both mechanically and creatively. That's what the 3D platformer was always good at. And Ukulele shows us the best bits of where we left off. That's the truth, we're all back on the ground floor again. And you know, it's a start. But we gotta, we gotta do a little more work to get somewhere good, get somewhere interesting, and move things forward. Well, that's me done. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments of this video, and maybe I'll try and get back to them in a future one of these. Uh, what, what else? How, how do I end this fucking? I'm gonna press the button. Stop this.